We've before been looking at logarithms, and now let's look at natural logarithms and how those work. Remember how logarithms worked. Those were things that were, um, remember, let's say we have log base, I don't know, 2 of 8 equals 3. Let's just say this equation, just to sort of remember what we did. What this really meant was 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Remember, we went 2 to the this equals this. That was a sort of the equivalent statement. So logarithms can be used in order to help us to get to exponential notation. And remember, with logarithms, we had a base. This, in case, was base 2. That meant we were asking for 2 to the power of what gives us 8. And 2 to the power of 3 gives us 8. You could actually just be asking this. You know, log base 2 of 8, what is that? And that's because 2 to the power of what gives you 8? Well, only 2 to the power of 3 does. Now, I'm actually going to erase those because I don't want to confuse things too much. I'm just reminding you a bit about logs. Because now we're going to have natural logarithms. And... You'd think we call it NL, but instead we call it LN. Okay, so we actually call them natural logs. We say LN. Now I'm going to write it as a curly L because if not, I'm afraid it's going to look like a 1. If I say LN like this, I'm afraid that my L's look like 1's. So I'm going to write sort of with a curly L here. So LN of X is just log base E of X. So this is sort of, this is the main definition here. This is how we define a natural logarithm. So a natural logarithm is nothing but a log with a base of e. In other words, we're going to say e to the what gives you x. That's how it's defined, this natural logarithm. So as you see how natural logarithms are related to e. Remember in the last video, we were just looking at what e actually is. It's an irrational number, and it's uh, approximately 2.71828, but it's not exactly that. Right? It keeps going forever. It's a non-repeating decimal. Okay, well, what can we do with this? Well, we can also learn this fact, then, that um, ln of x and e to the x, they undo each other. So, uh, again, if you're not sure about that, a nice little trick that I like to use with my TI-84 is take a look at the button. Remember, for log and 10 to the x, that meant logs and 10 to the x, they undo each other. Well, natural logs and e to the x undo each other. So ln and e to the x are sort of their opposites. So what this means, then, is um, you could state, then, that e to the power of ln x, for example, that... It's like these two right here undo each other. The e and the ln sort of, they sort of cancel each other out, and you're just left with x. Just like, um, in this case, what if you want to have e to the x, and you want to undo that? You know, let's say you have e to the x, you want to undo it. Well, take the natural log of it. Because natural log of e to the x, well, natural log and e undo each other, so you just have x. So I'm showing you sort of how these things can sort of cancel each other out. It's like this cancels out that, this cancels out that. That's sort of what happens. So you're just left with x. It's like the x just drops down to the floor. Same thing here. Just sort of goes boink, drops down. I'm going to take away those red marks, though. But just to show you, that's sort of what, what happens. That's how it works. And furthermore, we can look at the graphs. So what if we do graphs of these? So um, let's say here the graphs of e to the x and ln x are inverses of each other. What does that mean? Remember about inverses. An inverse means that if you did a graph, let's say here's my graph, here's my y-axis, there's my x. And let's say then I try to make a graph of e to the x. e to the x will do something like this. It'll go sort of like that. And in fact, this right here, this will be at 1. This will be a graph of y equals e to the x. And it turns out, remember what an inverse means. An inverse means if you take one graph, you just do a dotted line, sort of, that's like a mirror here. If you take a line y equals x, I didn't make a very straight looking line here, but it's supposed to be straight. Uh, that means that this thing right here, this would be its mirror, so that means the ln x graph would be like the mirror image of this e to the x graph. So if you sort of reflected it across this mirror. So maybe I'll draw it as a different color here. It turns out if this right here was it, then uh, the important thing then will be this point right here. That'll also be 1. It turns out it'll do something like, if I do it right, it should be something sort of, something like that.
So if you look at this piece right here, if you look at its distance from this mirror, it should be the same as that. And this one should be the same distance away from this as that one is, and so on. So these are here, they should be inverses of each other. In other words, this would be y equals natural log of x. So those are some neat sort of things we can do with them. So the first one is how we actually define natural log. It's just log base e. And the key other thing is natural logs and e to the x, they undo each other. So now let's look at an example. So what if in this example we want to solve for x? We're told that the natural log of x equals 3. It's a nice, simple example. The idea here is we want to get x by itself. Now you can't just divide both sides by natural log because you have to say natural log of something. So it's a bit more complicated to undo a natural log. But if you remember what we just said, natural logs and e to the x undo each other. Which means if you wanted to, you could take e to the x of both sides. In other words, you can say e to the power of ln x is going to be the same as e to the power of 3. In other words, I'm going to raise both sides of these, you know, e to the power of those. In this case, so e to the power of ln x and e to the power of 3. I can arbitrarily do that as long as I do it to both sides. The advantage, however, of this is that, look at this now, this ln and this e, they undo each other. That means the x sort of drops down, so we have x equals e to the 3. That's it. That's the exact value. If we wanted it to two decimal places, then we could actually calculate it. So we could say, great, what is e to the power of 3? So I could actually use this one right here, I think it is. So e to the x, so e to the power of 3. That gives me 20.0855, whatever. And here I asked for it to two decimal places, so 20.0. In this case, the 5 will make a round up. So 20.09. That would be approximately. So 20.09. So it's not exactly right. I've been rounding it because I wanted it to only two decimal places. But that gives you an idea of how to work with these. So if ever you've got an equation that you're looking at and you want to get rid of natural logs, then take e to both sides. Or if you've ever got an equation where you want to get rid of an e, take the natural log of both sides. That's how you deal with these.